Hi, students and teachers. We are continuing our journey through the ministry of Jesus today. Last week, we talked about his baptism by John the Baptist, and then we also took some time to describe Jesus in words uh, that we wrote on the board uh, based on things we already knew about him, what he said, what he did. Uh, and today, we're going to look at the people that he called to follow him. We call them the 12 disciples. Sometimes you may also hear them referred to as apostles. Uh, those are similar words, but they mean something a little different. But for now, either word is fine. We're going to look at the stories found in all four Gospels about these 12 guys, whose names you see behind me. Some we know more about than others. I found a really neat song, though, that introduces them. So we're going to start with that, okay? Okay, so I've got my guitar. We're going to learn this song about the 12 disciples. Their names are behind me here on the board. The melody of the song you will recognize as, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Uh, and I'm going to feed you the lines so that you can learn them. Okay, it starts, Jesus called them one by one, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Let's try that. Jesus called them one by one. Next line says, Next came Philip, Thomas too, Matthew, and Bartholomew. Next came Philip, Thomas too, Matthew, and Bartholomew. Alright, let's try to do all that together. Jesus called them one by one. chorus will be, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, and they all followed him. Here we go. Yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, and they all followed him. All right, there's one more verse. We got four left. James, the one they called the less. Simon, also Thaddeus. All right, here we go. James, the one they called the less. Simon, also Thaddeus. The twelfth disciple Judas made. Jesus was by him betrayed. The twelfth disciple Judas made, Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, yes, Jesus called them, and they all followed him. Let's do the chorus once more. Great job! So now that you've been introduced to all of them, let's take a bit more time to talk about the details. Uh, first of all, there's some names up here that are very similar. Uh, you've got two people here named James. Uh, the, way the, the way to tell them apart is by their father's name. Uh, this one, the brother of John, uh, had a father named Zebedee, and the one down here is usually called James the Lesser. I'm going to add that. He uh, had a father named Alpheus. Calling him the Lesser was not meant to be an insult or to say that the other James was better. Uh, it probably just meant that he was smaller or younger. Peter is sometimes called Simon Peter. But that gets confusing because there's also a Simon down here. 
so a lot of times you just see him listed as Peter. This Simon is also sometimes called the Zealot. And you don't need to know right now what a Zealot is, but you're welcome to look that up. Uh, sometimes Judas is called Judas Iscariot. We don't necessarily know why, uh, but it could be a reference to maybe where he was born or somewhere that he lived. And Thaddeus is sometimes also called Judas or maybe even Jude. And they'll often just say he's Judas, not Iscariot, in parentheses. Um, so Matthew over here is sometimes called Levi, depending on where you're reading it. And then Bartholomew here uh, is referred to in the book of John as Nathaniel instead. They're pretty sure that's the same person, Bartholomew and Nathaniel. Now, if all of this makes your head spin just a little bit, you are not alone. Uh, it can definitely be uh, a little confusing. Please know that I will not be giving a quiz on any of this material. But more than their names, I think it's important for us to know who they were and why exactly Jesus chose them. And then I'd like for us to talk more about what was expected of them. What did it mean to be a disciple? Then finally, we're going to ask another important question. Were these 12 the only disciples of Jesus? Or were they just the ones that the gospel writers chose to include in their list? Before I tackle these questions, though, have you ever wondered how old these guys were? Now, believe it or not, these were probably all teenagers. There's a chance that a few of them may have been a little older, probably in their 20s, but for the most part, based on things that scholars know about young men from that time period, they were probably older teenagers. So you could say that Jesus was the first youth minister. Since I'm a youth leader, I like saying it that way. Now let's talk about some of them individually. There's some things we know about a few of the disciples because of what they do later in the story. For example, Judas is the one who will betray Jesus in the end, which leads to his crucifixion. And Thomas is the one who doubts that Jesus really rose from the dead when all the other ones are talking about it. He wants to see the proof for himself. But let's look at the stories of the disciples when they first meet Jesus and are called to follow him. We really only get three stories about Jesus meeting these guys. One is about the four fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. One is about Matthew, the tax collector. And one is about Philip and Nathaniel, or Bartholomew, perhaps. The story about Peter, Andrew, James, and John is in all four Gospels, but the details are a little different in each. Here's the essentials. All of these young men were fishermen. Peter and Andrew were brothers. James and John were brothers, referred to as the sons of Zebedee, their father. Jesus sees them out fishing uh, in the Sea of Galilee, casting their nets into the water. They didn't have fishing poles at the time. They were just these really big nets and you threw them out into the water to catch all the fish. Uh, and Jesus just calls to them and says, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So we're going to be catching people instead of fish. We're going to be uh, teaching the good news to others. The Bible says that at once these four left their nets and followed Jesus. In Luke's version of the story, he adds a few more details. The men are cleaning their nets and are discouraged because they haven't caught any fish all night long. Jesus tells them to go back out and try again. They're, it, it seems obvious to them that this would be silly to do, uh, but they do it anyway. And when they do, they immediately catch a huge amount of fish. In fact, it's such a big haul that their nets start to break, and so they have to call another boat over, and all these fish just weigh the boats down. 
So adding that miracle of Jesus to the story helps us to understand perhaps what would compel these men to leave everything behind and follow this person that they just met. And in John's version of the story, they even uh, go and spend the day with Jesus first. Okay, so about Matthew or Levi, his story is mentioned in three of the four Gospels. John's the only one who leaves it out. And in all three versions, Jesus sees Matthew sitting at his booth collecting taxes. That's his job. He's a tax collector. Now, at that time, most people hated tax collectors. They were seen as traitors to their own people because they were collecting money that would benefit their oppressors, the Romans. Plus, they most likely cheated people out of extra money that they would then keep for themselves. But Jesus sees past all of this, and he invites Matthew to join him. Matthew then gives a special banquet, a dinner for Jesus at his home. And he invites many other tax collectors to join them. So as they're all sitting together, Jesus and all of these people that are despised, uh, the Pharisees see them uh, and ask, Why is Jesus eating with these sinners? Jesus responds with one of my favorite quotes that he says in the Gospels. He says, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Now, Philip and Nathaniel, their story is only in one gospel, the gospel of John. And in it, Jesus first asks Philip to follow him. Then Philip goes and talks to Nathaniel and says, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote. And it's Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel, knowing that Nazareth was not the most glamorous place on earth for a Messiah to call home, he responds by saying, Nazareth? Is there anything good that can come from that place? However, they both have an experience with Jesus. They observe what's going on, and they both commit to following him. Nathaniel even follows up, by proclaiming, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. If you've never heard that word rabbi before, it basically just means teacher. I'll talk about it in a minute. I really like what the Jesus Storybook Bible says about Jesus and his decision to call these particular young men. Let's watch a clip of how the scene with Jesus and the four fishermen specifically uh, might have gone. Between the story of his baptism and the story about calling his disciples, there's a part about Jesus going to the desert and being tempted by the devil. So this picks up right after Jesus resists these temptations and prepares to begin his ministry. Check it out. Jesus left the desert and set about the great rescue. He was going to get God's people back. But first, he needed to find some helpers and friends. He had a lot to do. He would need some people to help him. Who would make good helpers, do you think? Clever ones? Rich ones? Strong, important ones? Some people might think so, but I'm sure by now you don't need me to tell you they'd be wrong, because the people God uses don't have to know a lot of things or have a lot of things. They just have to need him a lot. One day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee when he saw some brothers and friends mending their nets. They were poor fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Let's go! Peter, Andrew, James and John looked up at this man on the shore. And they couldn't explain it. Their boats needed to be put away, their nets needed mending, fish were still wriggling on the shore. But something about this stranger made them just drop their nets and their fish, leave their boats and everything, and follow him. This God-man was like no one they had ever met. When they looked at Jesus, their hearts filled up with a wonderful, forever sort of happiness, and inside it was as if they were running free in an open field. Jesus asked twelve men to be his helpers, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. 
Matthew, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas. Meeting Jesus would change all of them forever. There are so many great things said and done in that clip. Who would make good helpers for Jesus, it said. Clever ones, rich ones, strong, important ones. These might have been what the people expected the Messiah to do. Surround himself with the most important or the most powerful people. But like I said last week, Jesus was always doing the unexpected. He didn't want those kinds of people. He wanted people who realized that they needed him. It's just like when Jesus was dining at Matthew's home and the Pharisees looked down on him for associating with tax collectors. He said, I'm not here for the righteous. I'm here for the sinners. Only sick people realize that they need a doctor. And Jesus was going to be the doctor to fix the things that weren't wrong with our bodies, but rather the things that were wrong with our souls, uh, with our hearts and minds, with our character. He didn't want people who thought too highly of themselves and looked down on others as being less important. So once he rounds them all up, what is it really that he wants them to do? What did it mean to be Jesus' disciple? Now a disciple was mostly a follower or a student, and Jesus wasn't the only rabbi or teacher at that time that took on disciples. But usually the rabbis would remain in the temple and students would just learn from them there. Jesus didn't stay in the temple, of course. He was on the move. His lessons would involve following in his footsteps, literally, as they would go from place to place and the disciples went wherever Jesus went. The word disciple itself comes from uh, a couple of root words that combine to mean uh, grasping hold of something intellectually, uh, kind of like we do in school. We learn and it goes in our brain, uh, but also taking hold of it or rather making it part of our lives. So Jesus' disciples were to learn from what he said and did, but then they were to do and say these things themselves as well. They were being equipped to also go and teach on their own. Jesus would send them out at times to spread the gospel and to minister to the people. One last question is whether these were the only disciples of Jesus or just uh, the 12 that happened to be uh, in the lists that the gospel writers included. It is very likely that Jesus had more than just these 12 disciples. In fact, there's a passage in Luke where Jesus sends out 70 disciples who were instructed to go to every town and place where Jesus was about to go. And there were females within his followers as well. Several are mentioned doing the same things that the 12 disciples were doing. For example, in Luke 8, it talks about Jesus traveling from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. And it says the 12 were with him and also some women. There are three listed specifically, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna. But it also says, and many others. It then mentions that these women were helping to support Jesus out of their own means. So the women were traveling with the group and helping support the group. That probably meant with their finances or their resources in some way. That sounds like disciples to me. Women are also the first to see that Jesus had risen from the dead. Some of those as well as two additional names are given, Salome and another Mary. Once we get to the book of Acts and to the New Testament letters, you'll hear many other names of women who played a big part in spreading the message of Jesus. I think all of these things are important to discuss because Jesus calls us to be his disciples as well. And we're going to talk a lot more about what that means in the coming weeks. Now that you know a little more about the 12 disciples and probably more than 12 disciples, you're welcome to stick around. We're going to sing that song again that we sang toward the beginning. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You can go ahead and stop the video. But the rest of us are going to sing one more time.
All right, we're going to do that song one more time. Here we go. Jesus called them one by one. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Next came Philip, Thomas, too. Matthew and Bartholomew. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. And they all followed him. James, the one they called the less. All right, you guys have a great week. I'll see you later.